All right, so now we are ready to upgrade our printer to the Sailfish firmware. The first step of that process is to download a different version of Replicator G that is specifically for Sailfish. This is a very important step. Uh, you do not want to try to use the regular versions of uh, Replicator G in order to manage uh, a Sailfish-based printer. So uh, go to Thingiverse and search for Sailfish, and you will find the Sailfish firmware by Jetty. We're going to download that, but we don't need all of these files. We only need the one that is specifically for our operating system. You want the latest version. Currently that is 0040R24, and we are going to want the Windows version in this case. So I'm going to download this one right here. It's a rather large file, so it takes a few minutes to download. Okay, so now we have a copy of Replicator G, the appropriate version. It's in C backslash Replicator G. Now we can create a shortcut, uh, or you can run it directly from here. To create a shortcut, just right click on it and uh, you can pin it to your taskbar, you can pin it to your start menu, or you can send it to your desktop as a shortcut. Uh, you can do uh, whatever makes it easiest for you. We're now going to run that new version of Replicator G. And in my case, it already went ahead and connected, so we know that it's working. Just going to check our connection, make sure that it has the right port. Of course, in this case, it's connected so that we know it is. And under machine type driver, make sure that we have it correctly set as the Replicator Dual in this case. After we do the upgrade, we'll need it to be set to the Replicator Dual Sailfish but for now it should be on the Replicator Duel. Okay, now before we do anything else, we need to record some of the settings so that we can put those back after the upgrade. So under the machine menu, uh, you do need to make sure that you're connected for this step. So uh, if not, just uh, look under connection, serial port, rescan ports, and then you should see a port there that you can connect to. Once you're connected, again under the machine menu, go to Onboard Preferences. And in this screen, we want to go to the tab that says Homing slash VREFs. This page contains these offset values, and those need to be recorded. You can either take a screenshot of this or write down those values exactly as they are. The uh, X home offset, Y home offset, and then down here you've got the X and Y tool head offsets. Uh, the rest of them should all be zero, so it should be those four values that you need to write down. Uh, your values might not be the same as what you're seeing here, especially the tool head offsets. Those might be a little bit different in each case, but uh, write down whatever your values are, and we will set those back exactly the same after the Sailfish upgrade. If you'd like, uh, just as an extra precaution, you can also take a screenshot of these other tabs. The first one showing these checkboxes and the number of tools, etc. These should all end up set correctly, but uh, it wouldn't hurt to just create a, a snapshot of that. Same with your acceleration settings and acceleration miscellaneous, which by the way, we'll want to set the D prime to zero after the upgrade. So we'll be coming back to that. You'll notice mine are already set that way. So for now, that's all we're going to do is record values. We're not changing anything. We're just writing down what these offsets are, and then we'll cancel out of here, and we can proceed with the rest of the process. I'm going to disconnect the printer here. And I'm going to close out of Replicator G. All right, now we have the new version of Replicator G, specifically for Sailfish, all set up and ready. Now I'm going to power off the FlashForge printer. I'm going to give that about 5 or 10 seconds and then power it back on just to make sure everything is clean and ready to go for the upgrade. Okay, as you can see, we are back up and running at the main menu. Now I am going to run the new version of Replicator G. 
And again, it's very important that you make sure that you are running the version that's for Sailfish. It should have an R24 or something more recent than that. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is update the preferences, file preferences, go to the advanced tab, and this firmware update URL right here needs to be changed from the default to the URL to obtain Sailfish. So you can get that from our documentation or by simply going to the Sailfish install documentation on the web and you can copy that URL and paste it in. And we just paste it right over this value here, replacing that. Click on close. Now in my case, I had already done this update to Sailfish previously, but for you, you would see down here on the bottom in the console that it's downloading a bunch of different files. They'll say things like Sailfish and Jetty, and it's going to scroll through a whole bunch of those. It'll take a couple of minutes. And once that finishes, it's not actually going to give you a message then completed. It just will stop scrolling and you'll stop seeing new files being downloaded. Once you're sure that that is completed, you're ready to proceed. So the first thing that we need to do is verify that our machine is properly connected to the right port. So you go to the machine menu and under connection, you might want to go ahead just to be safe and rescan serial ports to make sure that it has the proper port and then select the appropriate port that you're connected to. Now you do not want to be connected to the printer in the software when you do the upgrade to Sailfish. You do want to have the physical USB connection, of course, but you don't want to have it connected. Uh, I am going to go ahead and connect just to make sure that my port is working properly. If I see that it is, everything looks okay, so I'm going to disconnect, and now I'm ready to proceed with the update process. Let's get this other window out of the way. Okay, so now we're ready to do the actual upgrade. Go to the machine menu, upload new firmware, and in this window you're going to want to scroll down until you find the Flash Forge options, and you'll notice that there are two different options in here. There is one that says Flash Forge Creator 1, 2, and X, and underneath it it says version 1.5 in my case. And there's one right above that that says FlashForge Creator X with AT Mega 2560. It says version 1.7. Now those versions might change since this video is made, but FlashForge recently started to ship the Creator X with an AT Mega 2560 board, whereas prior to that it had been an AT Mega 1280. In any case, the updated board has just very recently started shipping and there's really no indication on the outside of the printer. The only way to figure out for sure which one you have would be to open up the bottom. Uh, there's a plate that covers the system board on the printer and if you remove the four screws and remove that metal plate, you can see on the system board a chip right in the middle and if you look with a magnifying glass, you'll see the name either uh, 2560 or the other number which I think is 1280 if I recall correctly and uh, if you have the 2560 chip you can use this version in my case this one is not so we're going to select the other version it's very important that you choose the right one I'm going to click next in this case we're prompted with two options we can install the regular Sailfish 7.6 which is the latest version or they have another one with a B after the number here, and that's indicated for machines that have broken SD card hardware. So we do not want that one. We want the first one here that does not have the B in the name. I'll click Next. It does detect the port. I'm going to select that one to use and click Next. Now this is the tricky part. Unfortunately, there really isn't any good way around this other than trial and error, but it's all about timing. What you're going to need to do here is you're going to need to locate the reset button that is on the back of the 3D printer. It's a very small button directly next to the USB cable where the USB cable plugs in. And you're going to have to use a tip of a pen or something pointy in order to press that button. And you need to get the timing just right so that you press the reset button on the printer 
and then just a moment later, as in a fraction of a second, you'll click the upload button here. And I recommend not even using your mouse. I recommend making sure that that button is highlighted, just like you see here, and then use the space bar to activate it because it's more accurate in terms of your timing to make sure you don't miss the button. So I would suggest clicking the reset button and then hitting the space bar and doing them very close together, as in dot dot, very close together. And I'm going to show you that now. It's very common to have to make three to five attempts at this. You might have to try several times. Um, if you don't get it right the first time, it will, it will delay for a little while, but then it will come up and tell you that the update was not successful, and you just do it again. Uh, so it is a little bit frustrating. Just take a deep breath, and be patient, and give it a few tries if you need to, and it will work when you get the timing right. So let's give it a go here and see what we get. I'm going to go ahead and get positioned here by the reset button, my little pointy tool. And now that I have that ready, I'm going to find my space bar, and here we go. Okay, in this case, as you can see, we did not succeed. Now, uh, there have been some videos of people that got this on the first try, and I have as well, but I'm actually glad this happened because now you'll see what happens when it does not work. So, I'm going to click OK, and we're going to try again. Put in space bar. Notice the tone for the reset is not happening as quickly, so that's a good sign that it's working. It's taking longer. I suspect that we are going to have success this time. And it was, in fact, successful. Now, as you can see, the printer resets itself. And I don't know if you caught that, but it did say Sailfish on the startup screen. And we are now running Sailfish firmware. Now, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is exit out of Replicator G and power down your printer. Give it five, ten seconds, and we can power it back on again just to make sure that everything is, is running completely cleanly with the new firmware. All right, now we should be able to go ahead and connect. And it already found the port. It's already connected. Okay, so now that our machine is running the new Sailfish firmware, we need to go back into uh, our onboard preferences. Uh, so you'll see I'm already connected here. If yours isn't, again, that's under the machine menu, connection, rescan ports if needed, and then just select the port there, and you should be able to connect. So we'll go to machine onboard preferences. And everything on this first tab should already be set properly. Go ahead and check that against your uh, screenshot if you made one, if you'd like. But the, uh, the main one that we want to go to, again, is the homing slash vrefs. And then you'll want to check all of these offset values to make sure they're set exactly as they were before the upgrade. Uh, in particular, you might find that the toolhead offset down here has been changed. 
uh, in this case it hasn't, but that uh, may be different in your case, and you'll want to set any of those values that have changed back to exactly what they were before the upgrade. Now, uh, you may also want to review your settings on acceleration. The defaults for fine quality are, uh, as you'll see here, 15 and 15 for the maximum X and Y speed changes. I lowered mine a little bit. I go to 8 for the maximum speed change on X and Y, uh, just because I found that that works a little bit better on the creator to avoid uh, excess vibrations, but you can sort of uh, try it out at the default values and, and compare for yourself if you like. Um, I'm looking for a, a higher level of quality as opposed to speed, so that might be different in your case. Under acceleration miscellaneous, you'll want to set your right and left extruder D prime to zero. And once all these changes have been made, you want to click on the commit changes button and it's going to notify you that it will reset the motherboard of the printer, which means, of course, we will get disconnected here in a moment as it applies those changes. And then as soon as that has had a moment to reset itself, we can go ahead and reconnect. And if you want, you can just go back into onboard preferences to check and make sure that those settings held. Everything looks good in this case. And so I can cancel out of here. And notice that it now says motherboard firmware 7.6. Very nice.